Good morning, Modern Steaders. We've had a bunch of Modern Steaders asking lately about the pig's weight and going over just a quick overview of raising pigs on pasture again. So I figured this morning's a great morning to do it while the pigs are still here. So let's go check on them. They got themselves locked in. They get so pushy lately with the food, it's not even funny. They keep breaking the straps and knocking down the automatic feeder. That's the only thing on their mind right now is food. Hey, watch out. Give them some slop, some leftovers, so we can measure them. Do it quickly. So Mrs. Pig's girth measurement is 45. Her overall length is 51. 45 and 51. Break that down. 45, 51. Spots is a lot wider, I'll tell you that much. Forty-eight for spots. You gotta do a little dance. A little dance. By forty-eight by fifty-two. Now let's go figure out how much they weigh. I knew that leftover food would work. When they start getting this old, they start getting pretty pushy. Gina cleaned the windows yesterday in the off-grid outdoor kitchen. They're so clear, I feel bad for the birds around here. Look at that, doesn't that look pretty? So nice. I hadn't washed them since we installed them. They were getting pretty bad. Oh, them poor birds. The last video we did in the outdoor kitchen, I left the sliding doors open and the wind noise was horrible. I'm sorry guys. I hope the sound quality on this video is better. I shut all the doors. All right, let's find out how much each pig weighs. So we need to take the heart measurement, which is the first one, and times that by itself. I'm not doing this on camera without a calculator. So, here we go. 45 times 45 equals 2,025. So now we're going to take the 2,025 times the length, which on Mrs. Pig's was 52. So that equals 105,300. Divided by 400 equals 263 pounds. 263 pounds. That's what Mrs. Pig weighs. Awesome. Spots? I bet you Spots is going to be pushing 300 then. 48 times 48 equals 2,304. So let's go 2,304 times 52 equals 
1,119,808 divided by 400 equals 299 pounds. Boy, I was close. It'll be very interesting to see what these weights compare to from the day of harvesting. We're gonna have to compare in the day of harvesting if I remember and if we have time. I will do the measurement trick again and get a closer weight. But even if we don't, we're only a few days away, so the weight's not gonna be off, maybe five or 10 pounds, not a lot. A couple of the other questions on the page was people wanted to know how much food we had into them. As of right now, we have 35 bags of grain invested into the pigs. When we first got started, our local feed store once a year has a pig, a pig day they call it I believe, and they'll give you two dollars off a bag of grain. So what I do is I buy one ton of grain, a pallet load, which is 40 bags. So let's see, we buy We buy 40 bags times 9 equals. We have $360 invested in grain right now for the pigs. Like I said, they've only eaten 35 bags. So let's go 35 times 9 equals 315. I'm going to guess they're going to have eaten two more bags before the class. So I'm going to go 37 times 9 equals. We're going to have $333 invested in grain. We have also fed them a lot of our leftover food scraps, stuff from the garden, and then they've had plenty of apples. So if they didn't have all the scraps that we've fed them, that's another question. How long do you keep the pigs for? From when we buy them and bring them home, we plan on keeping them for six months at our homestead. And from what we found for a rule of thumb, plan on in those six months going through 20 bags of grain per pig. So what I like to do, is I like to buy enough grain at the very beginning when I purchase the piglets. For two reasons, or three reasons. Our local feed store has a sale where we can save $2 a bag. If they didn't have the sale, if I bought a ton of grain at once, I am sure they'd give me a discount so we can save money that way. It's a lot easier to already have the grain at the house and not having to go out and get it every week or every couple of weeks. It's very handy having it here. That way when the pigs need grain, I can go to my basement, grab two to three bags, and fill up the feeder. That being said, you wanna make sure you have a nice dry place free from rodents that you can store it in. If you have to store it in outside, make sure the container is rodent proof and weather proof. So the expenses you're gonna have when raising a piglet is you're going to need the cost of the piglet and that varies from area from I believe 100 bucks to 150 bucks for the piglet and depending on the time of the year. Around here, springtime piglets go for 125 to 150 bucks a piglet. Wintertime piglets you can get for around 75 dollars a piglet. The cost of the feed per pig is going to be roughly around 200 dollars. And then another expense you need to think about is the butchering fees. The butchering fee is going to be probably around 300 bucks when you're all said and done. That's bringing the pigs alive to the butcher shop. They'll do the killing, they'll do the butchering, they'll cut up all your meat, package it, and they'll send it to your local smokehouse, get the hams and the bacon secured, and you'll get them back. So if you can invest once in a class like we'll be doing here, the three day pig harvesting class, in learning the skill of harvesting your own animals carrying your own meats, you're gonna save a lot of money in the long run. And that's what we're looking forward to. We're looking forward to have the skill of being able to harvest our own animals here on the property, and then being able to cure our own meats. That's gonna be a huge savings right there for us. And the other nice part about that is gonna be a lot less stress on the pigs. We don't have to try to get the pigs into a trailer which can take an hour or more sometimes. Pigs are smart and to them a trailer or something new. It's kind of like going into a deep dark cave for us. Pigs can smell very good and a trailer has new smells and odors for them so they're very curious and very hesitant to get into a trailer for you. So the pigs don't have the stress of going into the trailer. You don't have the stress of trying to load the pigs. They don't have the stress of the ride and when they get to a butcher shop to them it smells like death. I hate to say it. But it's true, animals can smell and sense all that stuff. 
So that being said is, so the point I'm trying to get to is that makes them all stressed and anxiety and send all different chemicals and hormones through their blood and they say that taints the meat. They say if you can process and keep your animal less stressed, the meat will be more tender and taste better. That's one of the things we'll be finding out here this year and I'm excited for it. It's going to be a more humane way to harvest our pigs. And we're going to have a lot more control from start to finish of our meat. We'll be raising the meat here and then we'll be butchering it, we'll be curing it, we'll be making our own sausage, we'll be knowing what went into the animal for food, we'll know which herbs and spices and all the care that has gone into the meat that we'll be making. And then the curing process we'll be doing here also. We won't be using any chemicals, so we're going to know what's completely in our meat from A to Z. Let's go back outside and I'll give you an overview for the fence and how we raise our pigs on pasture that way. We use two strands of electric fence, that's aluminum wire. We keep it around shin high and knee high. You gotta remember when a pig is only looking like this, most pigs don't look up, so they're not seeing what's here. They're seeing what's in front of them and what's down. So that's the perfect height wire to keep your pigs in. We use metal T-post, plastic insulators. I highly recommend metal T-post for the corners. But everywhere else, you can use fiberglass or plastic rods with slide over insulators. That works very well and is very inexpensive. You can get a solar charger, or what I did, I have a DC powered electric fencer with a marine battery that I just charge up. I have two of them. I have one car battery, one marine battery. I keep one on a trickle charger, and then I keep the other one out here. You can hear it's I just made a homemade cart and I keep it covered with a tarp. That way I don't have to worry about the weather getting to it. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you have any more questions on raising pigs or raising pigs on pasture or harvesting your own animals, leave it in the comments down below. We read all the comments and we love interacting with the modern setters. If you have you can also go on over to our website, lumnaacres.com. I'll put a link to that here in the video description below. And you can find out more information about how we raise our animals here, what we're doing at Lumna Acres, and ask more questions over there. If you liked the video, we ask you to give it a thumbs up, share it, it really helps the channel grow. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, now is a great time to do that. Just go down below, hit the subscribe button, and if you hit the bell button, that turns on notifications and lets you know every time we go live or upload a new video. And we'll see you right back here tomorrow at Lumna Acres, a guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency, and freedom. Bye.